Howdy and hello folks, my name is Christian Sasser, but you can call me Meets 4 and truth be told, I'm not really a Zelda fan. I know, I know, it's sacrilegious for a Nintendo fan to not be a Zelda fan, but personally, throughout my life, I keep starting Zelda games and eventually just getting bored with them and never finishing them. I don't have anything against Zelda, I think it's very well crafted and a lovingly made series, I respect it a lot in what it's done for the gaming industry, I just personally find it overrated. With that being said, the only Zelda game I've ever finished was Breath of the Wild. Throughout the currently 20 years I've been alive, I've played Twilight Princess, A Link Between Worlds, A Link to the Past, Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess Picross, the Zelda mini game that's in Nintendo Land, and probably a few more I'm forgetting. My point is I've played a lot of Zelda games and I just know they're personally not really for me. They don't really click with me that much. I don't get too excited about them. I also especially am not a fan of Skyward Sword. I played it on Wii and I couldn't even get past the tutorial because I hated the control scheme. However, Breath of the Wild just connected with me. It was one of the first games I got with the Switch and the direction that they took the game in, although it deviated from the traditional Zelda formula in ways that some core fans may not be especially fond of, those deviations are what attracted me to the game and they're what got me to play it and enjoy it. Because it was breaking conventions that I personally was not a fan of, I found that entry in the series to be more attractive as a consumer and as a gamer. And that brings us to today. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. It's out and I love it. This video is going to be going over a short bulleted list giving the reasons for why I love Zelda Tears of the Kingdom as a non-Zelda fan. And the TLDR for it, if you don't feel like watching all of this, is that it's more Breath of the Wild, but it's better Breath of the Wild. It takes what I loved about Breath of the Wild and just amplifies it through the roof while also feeling fresh in its own right. And here's the slightly longer explanation for all of you who are interested in hearing that. First bullet point I wrote, and arguably the most important to me, is exploration. Exploration is something I didn't really know I valued in a game until I played Breath of the Wild. And I think that exploration aspect is part of why I like uh, Fortnite so much, believe it or not. Fortnite with its ever-changing map and its just large, widely traversable map and with many different ways to traverse it, be that on foot or in a vehicle or riding an animal or what have you, and the way that it's always constantly shifting and changing, there's always something new to explore. There's a new part of the map to learn and there's a new part of the map to get used to. And so that exploration aspect is part of what I like about that game. And that too applies to Breath of the Wild and subsequently Tears of the Kingdom. Having a map that you have to fill in on your own is very fun to me. I like the whole, oh, you see that, that tower? You gotta go to it to fill in your map and maybe there's a puzzle you gotta solve before you can activate that tower. Ooh. And it, it forces you to think on your feet. Like uh, one of my favorite moments that I have encountered so far in Tears of the Kingdom is there is a tower where it's got the like bramble thorns around it and you gotta set them on fire to activate the tower, right? However, oh, and by the way, spoilers for Tears of the Kingdom, obviously. So you can't set the thorns on fire because it's raining. And I thought, okay, uh, what can I do? I see they have this like big construction pile over here. So maybe I do something with that. I went over to the construction pile and I saw next to it was a tent with a unlit campfire under it. And I thought, I wonder. And so I lit the campfire under it and I thought, oh, I need to make shelter over the thorns that I want to burn. So I made this horrendous looking wooden contraption. I positioned it over the entrance of the tower. Lo and behold, it covered enough of the rain to where the thorns dried out and I was able to burn them. It worked perfectly. And that's part of the exploration that I love in this game is the experimentation. And the experimentation was there in Breath of the Wild, but it's unlocked more in Tears of the Kingdom. And Breath of the Wild, you had to be more creative about how you break the game. But in Tears of the Kingdom, Nintendo gives you the tools to break the game yourself. And I think that is unlocking the ability to break the game for more players who didn't have the time 
or the energy to do so in Breath of the Wild. Also, one of the things I love about Tears of the Kingdom's exploration is how they've changed the map from Breath of the Wild to Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, one big shock for me that really helped set in my brain how much they've changed the map was I went to a location that I knew for a fact one of the fairy fountains was, and the fairy fountain had disappeared. It was not there. I couldn't find the location. I got so lost. And then eventually I found one of them just completely by mistake. And I was like, oh, that's not where it's supposed to be. And then I learned about the new fairy fountain missions. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. I didn't even think they could move. I didn't even consider the possibility that they could be moved. Nintendo has worked very hard to make this Hyrule feel alive. And it's alive in a very distinct, believable way. Like, oh, the the fairy fountains got moved over time because of the corruption around in the world. Sure, why not? Oh, monsters took over this town that was once peaceful and they had to relocate somewhere else. Sure, why not? We see uh, younger characters becoming older and we see a lot of continuity between the two games. And because of the uh, timey-wimey time travel plot. We see a lot of incongruity between the two games that is explained away and hand-waved by the time travel. But the time travel is not only a plot device, I think. I haven't beaten the game yet. Again, this is not a review. It's just my impressions. But I, it's not only a plot device, but I believe that the time travel is used as an explanation on why the world could be changed believably. Right. We don't have any of the Sheikah technology, uh, to my understanding. Like, there's no Guardians, there's no Guardian Scouts, there's no Sheikah Shrines, there's no Divine Beasts. None of those. They're all just... thanos <laughs> In their place are the Zonai people, which are, I say, new, new to me. I keep that in mind. A new race of people to uh, Breath of the Wild's canon that were, I believe, hinted at in the first game, but we fully get to see them in this game. And again, that time travel plot explains why their ruins and technology are superseding the Sheikah ruins and technology. Like, even uh, the Sheikah slate that is meant to look like the Wii U gamepad in Breath of the Wild is replaced with the Pura pad, which looks like a Nintendo Switch in Tears of the Kingdom. They haven't missed anything. It's, it's all changed. Like even like the, the Sheikah Research Lab in Hateno Village, I believe, is now a Purapad Research Lab. And it's, it's that both the continuity and the incongruity between the two games helps keep it feeling familiar. It's like the game that I remember playing when I was in high school, but it's also different enough where it still feels new and mysterious and fun and exciting. All right, next bullet point, storyline. It's there. <laughs> I know a lot of people uh, had qualms, uh, qualms. I know a lot of people had problems with Breath of the Wild's story, and I understand that. Uh, it's not my favorite story ever told, but I don't think it was terrible. Uh, I think it could use some improvement, right? And I think that so far from what I'm seeing, Tears of the Kingdom has a much better plot. Even with all the time travel nonsense, I think that its plot is very good. <laughs> uh, I, some of the voice acting needs a little work, uh, but that was in Breath of the Wild 2, and that's forgivable, at least, you know. Gameplay above all else, and I think the gameplay is very good, but that's not one of the points I've listed, so we're not gonna talk about it. But yeah, story's not bad at all in this game. Some of the consistency from the previous game is still here. Like when you go to Rito Village, there is a young Rito, I believe his name is Tulin. And in Breath of the Wild, you meet him as like a chick, like a hatchling or whatever. And in Tears of the Kingdom, he's older and he's more experienced with like a bow and arrow. And he helps you conquer the wind, air, temple, whatever you want to call it. It's good storytelling between the two games. And I think all of the partners that you can get in the game are like that. It's just great world building. And it takes the foundation that Breath of the Wild started 
and it builds upon it in a smart and believable way. And I think the new stories that it's telling are also compelling with the new uh, memories that Link can resurface from Zelda's time with the Zonai. The only memories I've gotten so far are the one where Zelda's at the tea party and the two where uh, Queen Sonya dies. <laughs> I told you there would be spoilers! Even though I haven't, you know, because I got them out of order, I haven't had much time to get to know Queen Sonya's character. Uh, I still think it was played very well. Like, uh, Matt Mercer uh, playing Ganondorf and combined with the animations for Ganondorf, they're really good. Like, uh, Ganondorf does this, like, creepy smile where he's like... And I don't even know if I replicated it right. And it genuinely, like, made me, like, pause in my seat and just watch the cutscene while he was laughing. Like, I, it demanded my attention. So that, in that specific instance, the performance was just excellent. Yeah, I did criticize some of the voice acting earlier, but also some of it has gotten better. Like, I think uh, the voice actress for Princess Zelda, uh, please forgive me, I don't remember your name at the moment, but she's doing a much better job than she did in the first game. Especially since uh, with the normal Zelda and like the evil Zelda, that's Ganondorf in disguise, uh, she's technically voicing two versions of the same character. And I think she's doing a really good job. And uh, yeah. That's really all I can say about the story, is that it's better than the first games, and I'm enjoying how it continues what the first game sets up, while also introducing its own ideas. That's mainly the whole story of this video, right? That I like what this game brings to the table, while also how it improves upon what the first game did. And lastly, this is something that the first game didn't really have. It's got uh, the spooky mystery aspect of it. I still haven't defeated any of the gloom hands that pop up out of the ground and chase you around with scary music playing. And they still like activate my flight or flight, flight or flight. They still activate my fight or flight every time. I hate them. I don't know how to beat them. They're scary and they're awesome. <laughs> it's the same with the concept of the depths as a whole. I love the depths, like the concept that like, now there's this giant just chasm underneath Hyrule that's basically the whole map that you can also explore underground and it has its own like separate like lighting system that you have to find these giant flower seeds to light up. It's, it's, it's such a good idea that is executed excellently. At first I was very like timid of exploring the depths and I was very like scared to do it. But then once I started doing it, I've gotten a lot more confident in trying to navigate the pitch blackness, especially now that I have uh, certain gear and armor and items and stuff that can like help illuminate. But like even with those, it's still tricky and it's still challenging and it's still a little frustrating and it's still fun to navigate this underground area. So it's, great design, great like game feel. It really adds to, like I said, the mystery. When the game starts up, you're going through these ruins and all this stuff starts happening. It's all just thing after thing happens. And it's genuinely a little disorienting. And then once Link gets his bearings on the first Sky Island and you're like exploring and learning about what all is going on and like, who these people are and what you have to do now. It's genuinely engaging. This goes back to the story aspect, is that the mystery aspect is very well woven into the story. And I'm very in genuinely interested to see where it goes from here. In the first game, it's like, oh yeah, I know, Link's gonna defeat Ganon and all will be right with the world. And it's, it's gonna be this for the, the game too. But like the whole like time travel Zelda thing, like. Can Zelda get back to the present? Uh, what's gonna happen with that? Like, there's an element of uncertainty that's been added to the stakes of the story. So it's like, I know the hero will triumph over evil in the end, but, like, what is that gonna cost? It's thrilling. There is a thrilling aspect of this game's design that is very, very good 
and likable and enjoyable. Yeah, that's about it. To, to, to recap again, the reason why I like this game is because it's Breath of the Wild, but more. Like I said at the top of this video, I like Breath of the Wild because it takes certain things I don't like about traditional Zelda and introduces new concepts that I like more. And so I'm very happy as a non-Zelda fan, but a Breath of the Wild fan, that the next Zelda they chose to make was just more Breath of the Wild, baby. And so, yeah, those are my first impressions of Tears of the Kingdom. I hope that you found it insightful from my perspective as someone who, you know, like I've been saying, isn't really into Zelda. And uh, let me know what you think of Tears of the Kingdom in the comments below. I already know that you probably really like it because a lot of people really like it. But if you don't really like it and you think I'm a stupid idiot baby who should play real Zelda games for men, let me know in the comments below. Have a great day. Thank you for watching. For all of you wonderful people who stay to the end and watch all the behind the scenes whatever bloopers at the end of the videos uh here's some mh lore for you this video is being recorded very last minute um it is currently a week and two days before this video needs to be done i am recording it at 9 40 p.m <laughs> uh and i just decided on this topic like uh shoot i don't remember it's not a very good topic. Also, the video for the 1st of July is going to be about the character design evolution of Fortnite skins. So I hope you look forward to that.